All right, welcome back live to the longest uh, television show on Saturday night in the nation with country music. And our special guests in this segment are Greg Pitts to my immediate left, Johnny Sosby, I can reach way over. They are with Community Newspapers Incorporated, uh, based in Spartanburg, and uh, Johnny is publisher, and Greg is general manager, a uh, part of that group. Johnny, how many papers are there in the Community Newspapers Corporation total? About 40 total. 40? North, uh, North Georgia, South Carolina. Okay, we'll a lot of mastheads, isn't it? A lot yeah. of town signatures. Now, are most of these are weeklies or bi-weeklies? Most are weeklies. There are um, two or three that are uh, bi-weeklies and uh, three times a week. Now, here you have the Chieftain, the right. Stevens Scanner, which goes to every home. That's Steve's correct. That's about, about 11,000 homes, Greg? Right? Yes, oh, um, 11,100, I believe. Is that a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of papers. And then also under the jurisdiction of you gentlemen is, is the Northeast Georgian in Cornelia, the Tri-County Advertiser in Clarksdale, the White County News in Cleveland, and the Nugget in Delonica. Is that right? That's correct. Can we have a name them all? That's all. Johnny is a native of where, Gainesville? Hall County. Hall County. Grew up in the public school system. Yes. At the Piedmont College. Right. How did you get interested in journalism? I'm not really sure. I uh, sort of got turned into uh, being a stringer for the Times and Guns while I was still in high school. I know that feeling. <laughs> it just sort of developed from there. Don't you think that once you get journalism in your blood, you, you can't get it out? It's tough to get it out. I I tried PR uh, one time and over at Truett McConnell and was in that for about a year, but during the same time, I was also uh, working for a newspaper, too. So it's, it's tough still to there. Out. Johnny worked on the Daily Times. He worked uh, in Forsyth County, on the Forsyth County News. That's correct. And then you were a city editor in Lawrenceville. Managing editor. Managing editor. Thank you, Managing editor is in charge of all the news operation, uh, or the newspaper's uh, uh, news operation. Greg Pitts. Greg and I go back. How many years, Greg? More than we probably want to count. Greg's late Quite. father, Lynn Pitts, and I worked radio microphones 28 years across town. Never had a crossword. And Lynn's the best play-by-play -play announcer I ever heard. And I've always said if Lynn had wanted to go, he could have gone to the college circuit and done well. Well, if I could do You know, that was kind of his second life, wasn't it? Postal service was number one. Right. He had, uh, had more than 30 years with uh, the U.S. Postal Service and uh, really, really enjoyed high school athletics. Uh, football, basketball, baseball, uh, you know, he did a little bit of all of it. I had a photographic mind. If you keep up with the names of players and, and keep the cigar going and not miss a lick on either, and everybody knew exactly what was happening. That, that had to be a God-given talent, Greg. Probably the thing that um, amazed me the most was um, Basketball. I think basketball is probably the most difficult play that I play right. to do, and uh, he was able to do that along with uh, keep a scorebook at the same time. And uh, for anyone that's uh, never tried that, believe me, it's difficult. That's stress too, really. I remember one time uh, in Elberton, your dad was a little late, and I had to do the first 15 seconds. And you talking about somebody stuttering? I uh, waited through, and I was glad to see your dad. Now your work in newspapering started where, Greg? Well, I started here uh, in Tacoa with the Tacoa record with Charles Hamilton, and I worked some in college with the Athens newspaper, of course. Um, worked um, a little bit with the old Piedmont Herald, as a matter of fact, when I was in high school, right. some too, in Tacoa. And uh, after I left uh, Tacoa, after I graduated from the University of Georgia, I went to Aiken, South Carolina, with the Aiken Standard. Was there for about uh, five and a half years, and. Uh, came back into the Northeast Georgia area with the Times in Gainesville, and uh, of course I've been now in my present position for about a year now with uh, the as, Northeast Georgia and uh, in this group. And this group. As general manager, what are your responsibilities, Greg? That's a real good question. <laughs> a lot of different things. Uh, in a, as you're well aware, in a small newspaper type situation, uh, you get to do quite a few different things, and I think that's probably one of the things I enjoy the most. Uh, you really you don't get too specialized to really get into uh, too much of a rut. Uh, you get uh, 
get to follow the the entire process all the way through, and it's very satisfying to be able to do that. You know, you, you have a very fine operation in Chieftain, uh, certainly growing. Ted Taylor is your news editor. Yes, we have Ted here in uh, here in Tacoma, the Chieftain. Who handles your advertising for the Chieftain? Yeah, we have um, a couple of ladies over here that do a real nice job for us, Nancy Phillips and Melinda Gresham. I know, I, I know Ms. Gresham you came from Hartwell. Right, she did. Hartwell's son. Now, what does a publisher do? I've known a lot of publishers in my life. I've never seen one who uh, didn't have ulcers. Uh, I hope you don't have ulcers, do you, Johnny? No, not yet. Okay. Uh, publisher basically gets to do what most everybody else doesn't want to do. Uh, and I'm sort of joking with that. Uh, it's like Greg says, in small newspaper operations, you get to do a little bit of everything. And just because your publisher doesn't necessarily mean that you sit in the office and make decisions and and make sure that uh, the money's coming in and, uh, and the work's being done uh, from that position. Uh, on Tuesdays, I get to get to bundle some papers occasionally mm -hmm. and help load them and uh, sack them. I've run some routes in my time. I didn't Greg and I, we, we get to run a route occasionally. Uh, There's not, nothing wrong with that. It kind of keeps you in perspective, doesn't it? Sure it does. But great things are happening with community newspapers, and uh, look for even greater things to happen. Uh, you, you folks are making some model papers out of it, all, all of them. Well, well, thank you, Billy. We uh, we like to think that uh, that we're making some improvements and some changes that uh, you know our readers uh, out there that that'll help uh, help make things a little easier for them to follow. Hopefully, and the people who like to subscribe may call their respective towns and, and subscribe to the either White County or. In Lumpkin County, or uh, the Chieftain is, is, of course, free, and the Northeast Georgian is a, is a uh, subscriber paper. You folks have just gotten back from Georgia Press Association. Yes, we were fortunate enough to go down yesterday and uh, really enjoyed being down there. I've seen a lot of people that, uh, you know, you don't get occasion to uh, to talk with that often. My, my old college classmate, Billy Morris, was there and spoke, I saw in the paper today. He's done well. Had a, had a very inspiring message yesterday. We really enjoyed that. What's the future for our newspapers, Johnny? Well, according to everything that we heard yesterday, it looks very bright. Uh, we've got to, uh, of course, continue to do our jobs as best we can, and we certainly will do that. Uh, uh, everything looks real bright for newspapers there throughout the years have held their own, and uh, everybody still wants their community newspaper. And, uh, they won't see it every week, and if it's a daily, every day. So. You're right. I never forget 1953 when I first subscribed to a paper. I was wondering if television would not take the place of newspapers. And it's not. I think it's only whetted an appetite to get the fuller story in a right. newspaper. Yeah, they all have, indeed, their place. Johnny is accompanied tonight by your wife, Susie. That's correct. And Susie's from where? She's from Hall County. Hall County. Daughter Jennifer and son David. David's going to be a newspaper man? He doesn't say. <laughs> Greg, who's watching out at your mother's house tonight? Well, of course, my mom is there, and uh, my wife, Jane, and son, Patrick, are both uh, watching in and out. You want to say hello to Patrick? Certainly do. <laughs> Greg um, has done his stint at the radio microphones, too, calling sports, and uh, I know your dad would be proud, Greg. Thank you, Billy. Well, it's pretty hard to wear a couple of hats, so isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being with us, gentlemen, and we'll have you back. And good luck to community newspapers. Thank you. Thanks Greg a lot, Bill. Pitts, general manager, and Johnny Solesby. That's S O L E S B W, -E, publisher. You have the Solesby's in Franklin County, S O S B Y, and maybe 10. Well, uh, you don't think so? I don't think so. A different branch. Look into Harold's camera number two, um, Greg, and take us to the break, will you? Just say we'll be right back. Or anything you want to say? Okay. We'll be back after these messages. What a love life.
much as the world of full service banking. Bank customers may choose from a wide variety of services and products at varying prices. At First National Bank of Habersham, we feel the quality of service is equally important as the number and cost of services available. That's why First National is committed to giving each of our customers the highest standard of services possible to meet their banking needs. Through our extended product line, extended banking hours, and four convenient locations, our trained staff of banking professionals deliver the kind of quality service that keeps First National's customers first.